Hi, welcome to Upskill IT. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how we can deploy a Spring Boot application in AWS with MySQL database. And let me tell you the steps. First, we are going to log into AWS Management Console using our account. And we are going to create an application uh, in Elastic Beanstalk and a database and in an application will be created in the environment so the environment we are going to choose java environment in that environment configurations we are going to create a mysql database and this mysql db can be accessed from our mysql workbench let's see what are the configurations we have to do and it will take some time in that time we are going to create our own spring boot app it's actually a rest api which you can test it in postman that's what we are going to do now let's log into aws.amazon.com in my account you can log into aws management console and it is going to ask i am going to use my email address yahoo email this is captcha is not correct yeah it's correct now it will ask you to enter the multi-factor authentication code in my mobile there is an authenticator app in that app i am going to see the code and enter it so once i have logged in see you can see your account name here jack and then I am in region Asia Pacific Mumbai region AP South one. Now I am going to Elastic Beanstalk. Now here I am going to create an application. I have deleted all my applications which I created earlier because if you leave the application and it will incur billing. So for learning purpose, okay. So I am going to name it as um, Spring Demo One. So this is the name of the application I'm going to use Spring Demo 1 and the platform I'm going to choose is Java platform because I'm going to uh, upload jar file later. At this moment I'm going to choose sample application only and create the application. It will take uh, some time to create this uh, environment and the application. Meanwhile, we are going to create a Spring Boot application right now. So, in STS Spring, uh, Spring Tool Suite or Eclipse, we can create a Spring Starter project. In that project, I am going to name the project name as Spring Demo 1. And uh, I am using JAR and Java version, everything you can confirm, Maven or Gradle, Maven. And what are the things I'm going to use? Spring Web, Spring Developer Tools, and Spring Data JPA. My SQL I will add the required version later from MBN repository. I can take from that. It's creating the project right now, 26% over. We can take some configuration properties. Meanwhile, in my software's file, I can take um, Spring and in Spring Boot. Go to SRC main resources application properties. Just copy this, and we will modify according to our requirement. So in your the project being created, resources application properties. I am going to specify the details. We will modify them. Uh, before that, let's uh, copy the dependency mvnrepository.com where you can take MySQL connector jar person 8 is what I am going to choose 8.2.023 because in AWS I am I am finding that person is there okay so I am going to form.xml and paste this inside the dependencies control shift f for format and now coming back so the URL is going to be jdbc colon mysql localhost this time being it is localhost okay later i will be changing it 
database name AWS. Username, I don't have a password. And then the dialect is not Oracle dialect. So I'm going to use Control Shift T MySQL 8 dialect. So this is not coming means we have not saved the pom.xml file. So you save all and now Control Shift T MySQL 8 dialect. Yes, it is. So copy the class name. Package name will be same only. ORG Hibernate dialect package. And done. So everything we have configured and one more thing I would like to tell you. Uh, usually we run these web applications in a Tomcat uh, 8080 port number, right? But for AWS, we have to choose 5000 port number. You can just try to upload a project configured for 8080. It's not going to work. And so in application properties, you are going to specify server.port equal to 5000 port. That's what I'm going to do it here also. Done. Now, what is the example we are going to do? Let's create an employee.java. This is going to be a entity class and a repository for CRUD operations. This is going to be a repository, which is an interface and that extends uh, JP repository and a service class. And uh, this is for CRUD methods and then a controller controller so here we are going to have mappings like get post and put uh, delete mappings. this is what i'm going to do right now so this is not the tutorial for jpa so i'm going to do it very fast also okay so there is a model package and there is a class called employee this is going to be an entity and we have already imported that jpa so we can use primary key is for example, ID. Couple of uh, properties like first name and last name. Done. So I could have used Lumber for generating the constructors and all. I have made it very simple demo. So I am going to add constructors and getters and setters. That's all. Fine. Now I am going to create a repository see all these classes and interfaces i'm creating in the base package or sub package of the base package so in spring boot it's a convention over configuration we don't need to configure base component scan base package all these things not required when you follow the conventions so employee repository is an interface that extends jpa repository and it's for entity employee type and the primary key is a string type then now i will create a service class which belongs to a package called service and uh, employee service use service annotation which is a kind of component so we can auto wear this later now i am going to auto wear the repository here employee repository yeah i have some uh, crud operation methods create read update delete methods so this is read and there is an update delete so for create we need to supply the employee object read has no input and read by id id is a string and, uh, update and delete also same now i will use the repository to do this task employee repository dot save employee this is going to add a new employee to the database read i'm going to return a list of employees find all Right. This is going to return a list of employees and find by ID, find by ID, ID, get only one employee is the return type. Update is same as the create, save employee. 
that sum. Delete is going to delete an employee. That's all service method. Now create a controller which is a rest controller. Package name being controller and uh, employee controller could be the class. So here I am going to use rest controller and auto wire service. Now here I am going to have methods like add employee, the same re re related to thread, create, read, update, delete. So this is add employee, read, get all employees. So this is going to be find employee by id, create, read, update. Modify employee, delete. So these methods will have mappings like add will be post mapping, right? So post mapping, and this is going to be get mapping, and then this is going to be get mapping with path variable slash path variable id. Put mapping for modification and then delete mapping for deleting. So for add employee, I am not getting data from the URL. I am going to get it as a request body. Request body employee. This is same for all manipulation like here also delete also done so how we are going to do that we are going to call employee service dot create method for adding an employee the return type should be changed control one enter and then we are going to get all right so read without any parameter list of employees will be returned and Find employee by ID. Yes, dot read of ID. So where is that ID? It should be a path variable, right? So path variable ID is mapped to ID. And then here uh, the return type, control one enter. Here we are going to modify update employee. Return, return type is changed. For delete, I am just going to delete by that sum. So, everything is fine. We are going to test this. Um, let's right click the project, run as Spring Boot app, and see the port number should be 500. Yes, 500. Let's go to the browser and localhost 500 slash employee at this moment there is a record that means in mysql there is a uh, record so i am going to open my mysql workbench already uh, this table employee is already there that's why the records are coming here okay So AWS is the database in app application properties. You can see AWS is the database which has uh, something like that. So I'm going to create a new database. Uh, create database AWS one, and I'm going to use that also. Use AWS one. Yes, comment it. Now. It's a new table, a new database that doesn't have any table, not AWS, AWS one has no table, right? So I'm going to change this to AWS one, save, restart, 
there are no records so let's start from employee there are nothing so who created the table see there is no record because the new database jp has created the table that you know all these things now let's come to elastic beanstalk what is happening here it will take few more minutes actually successfully launched enrollment and uh, there is an enrollment okay hyphen env right so this is where um, you will see the application string demo one and there is a url that means it's ready i'm going to click this this is a sample project now uh, two things we have done what are the things we have done i'm going to type it here we have created an application in aws elastic beanstalk and uh, deployed a sample project sample application which is already there already present in aws that's what we have done number two we have created a spring boot rest abi application in eclipse or sts this is what we have uh, done now what i'm going to do is in uh, here okay in uh, in this application uh, there is a environment in which the application is running so to be precise in an environment this application is running in that environment there is a configuration in that configuration there's a database we are going to create mysql database here that's what we are going to do now next thing next we are going to use that aws mysql in our application properties that's what we are going to do so first i am going back here um, environments this is the environment here um, okay let's go to the applications this is not refreshing so i'm going to once again aws amazon my account management console and elastic beanstalk ah good so this is our environment in this environment here i can upload my jar file also now before that i need a database in this project so go to configurations of the environment the last configuration you can see database oh there is no vpc it's saying a uh, one minute uh, let's see the environment let us see the environment once again all are successful only no okay positively okay we can go to the configuration last thing database edit here i am going to uh, choose mysql version 8.0.23 this is the reason i use 8.023 username i am going to choose root password let it be root user so note down before you forget root root user and then i am going to apply so what happens when you click apply this is going to update our environment with the mysql database let this continue for some time after that what we will do we will do couple of settings okay what we will do um, in this configuration okay once database is created we configure the database uh, in such a way it can be accessed from anywhere for that uh, we go to security uh, we will go to security configuration and uh, specify that uh, properties to all traffic all traffic so this is like security group okay so once this is ready i'm going to show you how we are going to configure that uh, database we'll continue once this is ready let's see the progress status updates here yes now it's ready 
we are going to configure mysql database once again i am going to configuration the last one is the database yes now our mysql database is there couple of settings i told you we are going to configure so that it mysql can be accessed from our workbench also from applications so db identifier now this endpoint this is what we are i am going to copy it this is what we are going to replace the localhost suppose if you see jdbc colon mysql colon localhost colon 3306 slash db name so how we are going to replace it instead of localhost i am going to use the endpoint so this is the endpoint which is going to be replacing the localhost and port number also same 3306 and the database name we are going to find out i'll show you how to find out okay we can use mysql workbench to find out see in mysql workbench i am going to connect to database uh, here i am going to paste this endpoint okay control c control v and the password i am going to use root user click okay if all these details are correct and even if it is correct we have not configured the database to allow other applications to connect mysql right so it's not going to connect now so i'm going to uh, configure the security group now so as i told you we are going to configure security group for all traffic see this is not allowing my mysql workbench to connect mysql so let's go to the active workbench uh, security group see here there are multiple security groups but you go to the security group which is active and here again you just click the security group id here inbound rules this is what i am going to configure now so inbound rules to be set to it's currently all tcp i am going to edit this and change it to all traffic and the source will be anywhere save the rules and if immediately it is saved so what i am going to do now in workbench once again i am going to connect to database i am going to paste the endpoint i have already copied the endpoint here see this is the endpoint instead of local host i am going to use this in mysql and the password is root user now it's going to connect to mysql which is in aws i understand there is ebdb is the database which is there i can create multiple database but for cost factor i'd like to use this database ebdb so do you know uh, in application properties i am going to change the database name as ebdb and also the local host is replaced by aws endpoint mysql endpoint and the password now is root user do you understand this now our application is going to connect with that mysql database which is rds in uh, in aws and this is the database so restart is automatic and now if you go to uh, this one still it's working fine okay now i am going to uh, add some records uh, if, if you refresh this and you see the table is created because spring boot jpa automatically creates the table right the table is been created i can insert uh, data here also i can do it in postman also let's do it later now i am going to deploy this project in aws elastic beanstalk so for that i am going to stop this program create a jar file how would i create a jar file in maven right click the project run as maven build in uh, goals i can you clean install so this is going to create the jar file if build is successful yes i am seeing build success here that means if you refresh this target folder there will be a jar file present inside here yes this is what i am going to deploy now in environment go to elastic 
brain stock environment so this is our environment where i can upload and deploy click there choose the file the file should be um, spring demo one is the project which we are creating now target and this is the chart file and deploy uploading application version deploying and this is going to take some time after that uh, we are going to um, test this rest api using postman and that should update the data in the database in the aws those aws records database records can be viewed from my sql workbench also I'm going to create a couple of records here, insert it to employee values, the three values, ID, first name and last name. So the ID 1, going to be a first record. Here I can, it's, I have stopped the project already. Let this process complete and we will continue after that. Now the process is completed and I am going to application. URL is there. This URL slash employee as per our URL employee. So we are going to see the data, there is one record in the database which is coming here. This URL you can share it with anyone, they can test it in Postman. For get mapping they can test it in browser. For post and put and delete mappings we are going to test it in Postman right now. So post mapping is there, I am going to use this URL and uh, before that I am going to check the get mapping. There is one record already. I am going to take this JSON as a sample. Go to the body and paste it here. Post mapping for adding records. Employee number 2. Rajesh. This is going to add a record. Now refresh the browser. There are going to be two records now. For put mapping, we are going to test it by changing Karna into Kumar. Send now. This Rajesh Karna is going to be Rajesh Kumar. It's going to change into Kumar. This is put mapping and this is delete mapping. Which is going to delete this record. There will be only one record at this moment because of that. That's all. We have completed the demo. Thanks for joining with us.